Alrighty, we are here in the Talent Attraction Coaching Call Mastermind. Chris Weaver, Coach Dream Weaver here. And I'm going to hand this over to Bettina. There we go. Yay! So, uh, this is streaming live at our Talent Attraction um, uh, Mastermind Facebook group. And because of the, the people that are here, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Um, uh, and, and I'm going to talk, I'm, I'm going to do the napkin presentation, but I'm going to talk my way through the napkin presentation so that there's, there's an understanding of, of, of why we're talking about these things, especially for those of you that are relatively new to the industry um, and, and to EXP. So um, when, when my mom started in real estate in the 70s, she joined one of the biggest companies in the country, Century 21. And when she joined Century 21, which for those of you who don't know, they wear gold jackets, right? <laughs> this, is, this is part of who they are, right? Part of how they distinguish themselves, the gold jackets. And she went to the local Century 21 office that was owned by a local broker who had bought a franchise from Century 21 Corporate. So Century 21 Corporate was not in the business of buying and selling houses. They were in the business of buying or of selling franchises and providing resources to a franchise owner, right? So it's kind of like when you think about Subway, right? When you walk into your local Subway and you order the meatball sub, it tastes the same here as it does in Anaheim, California, as it does in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, as it does in Toronto, Ontario, right? It tastes the same in all those places because of a consistency in the products, in the methodology, in the support system, and the training throughout Subway, right? And so this is why franchising was so important to the real estate business and took the real estate business from a uh, a local to, to giving it access to nationwide resources. This happened in the 70s for the first time, for those who don't know. So the oldest real estate, like the oldest still functioning real estate company is Coldwell Banker, started in 1906. And when they started as a real estate company in the, the, the San Francisco area, it was to consolidate information. So what they did is Back in the day, if you had a house you, were, you wanted to sell, you walked down, and if any of you live in rural communities, it's still this way, you go down to the local meeting place, the local general store, or the local family restaurant, or the local nursery, or whatever it is that that's that, is that hub of local information, and you put your house onto a list that was maintained there. It was called a listing, right? And this company, would allow you to put it up there and they would take a very, very small percentage because you listed it with them. Cole Becker came around in, in the early 1900s and said, we want to consolidate these listing services, right? So, so that I can get information about what's being sold in uh, uh, Stockton, California, even though I'm in Modesto, right? Or whatever the case may be. So um, fast forward and in each decade from the 70s through till now, there have been just huge changes in the real estate industry. And uh, when, when I started in, in the real estate industry, the only way that I could get leverage from other people selling things was to become a broker owner. Right? That was the only way. And so I, you know, I bought a, a, a Remax franchise. Um, and ended up selling that, bought a Sotheby's franchise, ended up selling that, bought a sell state franchise, ended up selling that. And in each of these, it was, it was how do I provide services to, to local agents, help them sell more houses, help them be productive, and, and get a piece of the pie, if you would, from that. And the only way to do that was for me to become a local broker and have a local brokerage. And there were a number of companies back in the early 2000s that were trying to think, of, okay, how do we do this differently? How do we do this better? And um, one of the things that, that I like to, to, to look back on is when, when Gary Keller started Keller Williams, 
the vision that he had was of agent ownership, right? For any of you that have been Keller Williams agents, you've got your ALC, your, your agent leadership council, you've got all of these things at the local office that require participation of the agents, right? You've got multiple ownership, so there isn't just one owner of every uh, uh, of every Keller Williams uh, office, there isn't just one owner, there's a team of owners, right? And the purpose of this was to give um, many people the opportunity for ownership. Um, the other thing that, that Gary Keller uh, effectively came up with was how, how do we reward the agent for attracting someone to come to, to Keller Williams? And, and he created uh, what something that's called profit share, which goes seven levels deep. So if you bring someone into to Kevin Williams, you get a little piece of what that person does. If they bring somebody, you get a little piece of what they do. But it's based on the profit of the market center that they belong to. So uh, the way real estate companies grow is through acquiring agents, whether that's a new agent or an experienced agent, right? And so we've got a national company And, and this is, you know, any number of companies. This is Remax, this is uh, uh, Cole Banker, this is Keller Williams, this is uh, HomeSmart, um, any of these companies where there is a national company. There's one local here that is in the process of going national, uh, uh, for those of you who are familiar with Jay Park. Um, and I just saw this post on Facebook, and, and I was at JP and Associates, I was at their first awards ceremony five years ago in the owner's uh, uh, living room, and there were he had 25 agents, and he gave out these awards, and he just passed 3,000 agents, and has sold 100 franchises in the past year. Right? So, national company. What they do, how they do this, is they sell regional ownership, and then the regional owners sell. Franchises. So, and, and I want to give you some numbers that go with this so that it makes sense. So, at this level, the national company, they are taking off the top of every commission that happens what's called a royalty. And that royalty is anywhere from 3 to 8%. At the national level, right? Every every national company does this. So, what most local companies like Abby Holiday, if you're talking to Abby Holiday, what they're going to talk to you about is how you don't have to pay this if you work at Abby Holiday, right? Because we're local, you don't have to pay this national royalty, right? Regional ownership, the regional owner is going to make anywhere from three. To ten percent, right? And that comes out of your commission split. That's a relationship between the regional owner and and the franchise. And then the, the franchise that you're working for, so that individual office is also going to be getting between three and ten percent. So when we think about a commission split, the the agent goes and they get the they get the 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 client and they utilize the resources that are provided by, by the company that we work for, and we give anywhere from 9 to 28% or more. When I got into the business, it was very standard that everybody was on a 50-50 split. That's you started at 50-50, and if you were really good and were a top producer, you might have up to 60 or 65% that you were able to keep, right? So this is where the industry started, right? This is where the industry is, and something happened in 2000. And in 2008, nationally, there was a change in the structure of real estate companies. And what that structure change was is that you didn't have to be a local owner to have a local brokerage. It might not sound like a lot, but it's huge. What that meant is this national company could be the local owner without having to go through this part of it, right? Mm -hmm. So when you think about this, what 
EXP has done is flip this upside down and what we do is we take a lot of the resources that happen here and we put them into our uh, into our agent population, right? So put them into things like agents providing these services for each other nationally. Um, and, and this money is not taken up within PXP. It's actually paid out in what's called revenue share to the people who are actually providing these resources and actually attracting the talent. So what has allowed us to do this is, and I'm going to talk about three things today. I'm going to talk about our disruptive technology. I'm going to talk about agent ownership. And I'm going to talk about revenue share. And the biggest reason we're able to do this is because of a disruptive technology called Verbella that allows EXP to provide a virtual office, right? A cloud office. So instead of having to provide the brick and mortar, and, and uh, all of us, these are really good things that we can, examples that we have in our heads, we can remember back to if I wanted to watch a movie on a Friday night in the 90s and the early 2000s, I went to Blockbuster, no. right? And I walked around and I got a video and it was a new release, right? And so I got that new release video and I had to return it within 24 hours and I never did. Um, so I always returned it on Sunday night, which meant it didn't cost $5 to rent that movie, it cost $10 to rent that movie, right? And, and I paid that $10. So there's a technology that has come along in the last 15 years, 18 years since then, that has put Blockbuster out of business, right? This was, Blockbuster was huge. You know, these, these, these big box retailers that have been disrupted by technology, this has been a huge change in the, 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 the way humanity does business. When we look at the largest retailer in the world is Amazon, right? 25 years ago, Amazon didn't even exist. Right? I mean, that's a huge difference. So what, what EXP has figured out how to do is, is how to provide a cloud office. And now there, I could spend hours talking about our cloud office. And I'm just going to talk about a couple of things that for me as a veteran in the industry, um, what that cloud office environment has meant to me. It has meant that I do not have to be the ultimate authority for everyone around me. Right? So in a local office, you go into your local office, and that local office is limited to the skill set of the people that work in that local office. So if you've got really great people, you've got a really great office. Right? So I don't have to be that great. Because Jonathan Dupree does real estate one-on-one -on -one training on, uh, uh, on Sunday nights, every Sunday, in our cloud office. And he's in Baton Rouge. Right? And he's also a national trainer. Um, Next Level Agents, for those who aren't familiar with NLA, is, is one of the most successful Facebook-based groups for real estate agents. It's Kevin Kaufman, Fred Weaver, um, and uh, 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 um, Ben King. Um, and they were all Keller Williams people back in the day. Half of them are now EXP people. But uh, Kevin Kaufman and, 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 and Fred Weaver just did a training in the cloud this last week on how to build a team. Right, and and it was it, it is seminal the work that they're doing and working with agents and and um, we have access with these people because we're a national company to these national trainers and to these national resources. Now, how many of you are tech savvy? Right. So if you are tech savvy, if you were in a local brick and mortar office, you would become the tech IT person for that office. You would, <laughs> right? Because right. as soon as you showed that you were tech savvy, if someone didn't know what they were doing, you would be. Oh, you know, we, we, we call Chase because he knows. He knows, right? He understands that he this, right? And we just end up being that person who does that, right? Um, and, and, that's, and that's cool. So with the, the close to 20,000 agents that ESP has, there's an actual dedicated support staff that are IT professionals that don't have to be here local in my local office. They can be anywhere, right? Because we're meeting virtually in, in, in the cloud. They can take control of my computer with my permission, obviously. 
and fix things for me and help me, right? And that's a level of tech support that I didn't have before. The same is true with payment processing. You know, it's not Madge who, you know, is, is the best at counting. She's our chief counter, and, and she does our CDAs and, and calculates our commissions on her abacus, um, right? No, we have actual people with CPAs and, 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 you know, financial degrees that are doing these things because when you have an aging population of 20, you can, you can afford support staff that's actually very qualified when you're dealing with them nationally, right? And so these are some of the, the leverage of that cloud office. But like I said, we could talk about that for, 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 for days. And, uh, um, uh, and as for those of you that aren't EXP yet, as you be, begin to be more acquainted with EXP, you'll learn more about those things, and it's pretty amazing. So the next thing that I want to talk about is agent ownership. And agent ownership is basically replacing some of this. And, um, and, and I ask this question of everyone I know that's been in the real estate business for more than a few years, is I ask them the question, when you left the last company you were with, how much ownership did you leave with? None of them have an answer of something that they mm -hmm. left with. And, and the, the, reason, the reason for this is, um, is because there really hasn't been a way for an agent to be an owner in this structure, right? So what, what, what EXP has done is because they've eliminated having to pay this out, EXP is a publicly traded company that has stock, and EXPI is traded on the NASDAQ. Uh, we've been listed since last year. Uh, and, and so Bettina's been here probably the longest of everyone in here. When you guys joined, mm -hmm. just out of curiosity, around what was the stock traded for? A couple then? bucks. A couple bucks, right? And was it traded on the NASDAQ then? No. No, it's pink pages, right? Over the counter stock. And now we're traded on the NASDAQ just you know, two and a half, three years later. Um, and, and if somebody's got a phone, if you could look up, what's EXPI trading at right now? I haven't checked in the last few days. <clears throat> but more than $2. More than $2. Yes, definitely more than $2. It's substantially more than $2. $10.63. $10.63, right? Yeah. So, so when... Well, what's cool is their, their goal was to be on the NASDAQ in five years. Yes. They did it in two and a half years. So, so, how, so, okay, Adrian, how do I become an owner? Well, here is how we acquire ownership as agents at EXP. So, when you do your first transaction as an EXP agent, you are awarded stock options that vest in three years. It's about $400 worth of stock, right? So, uh, not to make any claims of what the stock is going to do, but when Juan and Bettina got there, $400 or whatever the, the amount was worth of stock back two and a half years ago at $2 a share, um, it's gone up considerably since then now that it's vested. You guys just vested them, all right? Or yeah. We're about to. Well, June, June yes, was so our three-year mark. Yes, so, you're, you're, so your initial vesting is happening right now. That's cool. That's pretty amazing, right? <laughs> so, and just but practice. we're just sitting. It's We're leaving it. I mean, we're not doing it. So, like, we don't pay attention because... It's... it's because our company is doubling every 10 months. Right. And that's, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, so the to first way it. that you get shares is, is when you do your first transaction, you get some, some shares, some, 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 some stock options. So, is yes. Is it only on your first transaction or is it every transaction? That's on that first transaction. That's on that, first, that is gifted to you. Okay. Okay. So, next is someone else got shares. When Bettina got her first, when Mom got their first transaction, mm -hmm. it was the person who had invited them and sponsored them to join the XP. They also got some shares, right? So thank you. And that's the way it is now. So Gladys isn't here, but when Gladys did her first transaction um, as as my level one, she got some shares, and I got some shares. It was actually thirty seven shares. So it was very cool to see that. Um, and and that is one way that we have agent ownership, and and I'll, and. And I'll, I'll talk about two other ways is um, <clears throat> when, uh, uh, when you do a transaction, you have the option of taking 5% of every commission that you do and 
receiving that in the XPI stock at a 20% discount. It's totally optional. You don't have to do it. Um, almost everyone I know does it mm -hmm. because it's kind of like free money because we're used to, to spending all of this, giving it away anyway, right? That 5% that just kind of like leaves it and just kind of sits there. Now that is not stock options. That's actual stock purchase, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the, the, the second way is you have that option. You can do that and it's at a 20% discount. So if you did a transaction this month and let's say it was a $10,000 transaction, means that $500 of that, if you chose the 5%, you'd be able to buy, it's done for you in the back end at a, so not at $10 and some odd cents, it would be $8 and something, which is 80%, right? So at a 20% discount. And that just goes into, and you have that stock, and that happens on every transaction, if you chose, so choose. Now, the third way I'm going to explain in about five minutes, okay? Because I want to get to this third thing, and that's revenue share. And, and... This and this are is the, the largest difference between EHP and everyone else, right? So I'm going to shift gears and I'm going to put some numbers up. And for those of you that have never seen this, I have a crisp new one dollar bill. The price is going down. Um, I think I have a 20 in my pocket. If you can tell me what these numbers are, if you've never seen them before, if nobody's ever told you what these numbers are, you can guess what they are. No, uh, you do. A crisp $1 bill. Um, so, 900,000. 4%. 36,000. 3,000. Anyway, if he hasn't seen this, you know what these numbers are. All right. So, $900,000 is the amount of money you would need to save. So this is savings. So that at retirement, at a return rate of 4%, and, and so if you talk to anyone, managers, uh, they will tell you that how you calculate your money that you save for your retirement is you use that 4% rate, actually it's down a little bit right now, it's about three and a half, that you, you calculate that rate as over 20 years, and that will deplete your principal, and that's what you'll be able to live on for 20 years, right? So $36,000 a year, this is yearly, is... $3,000 a month. So, how many of you believe that you're probably going to need to have more than $3,000 a month when you retire? Right? So, how many of you had your stomach drop into your left shoe <laughs> when you saw the $900,000 number of what you would need to save in order to have $3,000 a month? I know mine did. So, I, I want to be very clear. My retirement strategy prior to EXP was to not retire, right? Seriously, my retirement strategy was to live my life in a way that I would die before I'd ever have to retire because retirement was not an option for me, right? Because there's no way I can save enough money, right? It's kind of, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of like 20-year-olds who say, you know, 30 is old and I want to die young, right? You save that up until you're 30, right? And then, and then 40 is old, right? And then 50 is old and now me at 50, you know, 70 is young, Right? It's like, you know, the surprise, <laughs> said, you know, died at the age that's young. Right? Because my perspective has changed. But this is a scary number for me. Right? And I can't imagine what it's like for those of you that have kids and you're also saving for, a co you know, college education or you're saving for, for these things and, you know, how to provide this life for my, for my family. So that is the pretext of revenue share. Right? So here's, here's what I want to, to, to share with you is everybody at EXP is on the same commission plan. We're on an 80-20 split. So the agent gets 80, the company gets 20, and there's a $16,000 cap. What that means is that once I paid $16,000 to EXP, I'm at 100% and I don't pay them anything anymore. Right? So... Uh, 
I want to do a three-year plan having to do with revenue share. So, and, and I'll start off by saying this about revenue share is if you attract someone to come to EXP, then as they produce, you're getting a certain portion of their commission the same way on our other page, the local office and the, 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 the regional office did. So is it reasonable to think that over the next three years, you would be able to attract two agents a year to join the XP? When I ask that question nationwide, everybody says, well, yeah, that's, well, of course. So two six cappers. agents cappers. over the next three years. So at the end of three years, you have six people that have joined. So cappers, so people that are paying in that 16,000, right? So to cap, it's doing about you know, 2.8 million in, 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 uh, uh, in, in not commissions, but in, in, in sales, um, is what capping is. So if you, if you were to bring in six cappers, um, uh, how much per year, for those of you that, can, that are good at mathing, how much does having six cappers, how much do we make on that, on those six cappers? Well, one capper is 2,800. So one capper is 2,800. So six cappers would be 2,800. So one capper is 2,800. So six cappers would be... He's got he's got his calculator. There's always somebody in the room with the calculator. 16, 8. 16,000. <laughs> so... I only have two problems, math, but it's okay. Three out of two people have a problem with math. Um, so $16,800, is that more or less than $16,000? More. Right? So, so basically what we're doing by just three people or two people a year for the next three years, six people as our tier one people, and, and I have covered my cap. So how many of you would like to do more than just being cappers and do more than like just two or three million, but want to do 10 or 15 or 20 million? So there's another way to have agent ownership, and that's called ICON. So this is not for the faint of heart. This is not easy. Everyone does not ICON. Want to have, have, have ICON. And what that means is that once you cap, you do an additional 20 transactions mm -hmm. or a total of $500,000 in gross commission income. And at the end of that year, when you hit that icon, that $16 is awarded to you in stock. So if you're a real super producer, right? If you're one of that, that, that upper echelon, top 5%, top 10%, which all of us aspire to be, then that is, is, is given back to you in stock. And so, um, uh, so Juan and Tina have you know, they've been producers, super producers, and they've been doing this for three years. They've you know recruited people. Um, they've iconed twice. Um, and about how many shares have you guys acquired in your three years? Like forty thousand ish. Yeah. It's about forty thousand shares, right? So I will ask you this question: Have any of you ever had a job where at the end of three years you had four hundred thousand dollars in stock? At the end of those three years, I have not. And I've had some really good salaries in some really good companies that I've worked for. I've never had that opportunity. Right? So that's pretty cool. So if this is that tier one, so right, we have tier one here. So this, the same way how Keller Williams, Gary Keller, is seven levels, right? Our revenue share goes seven levels deep as well. So on level two, so do you think it's it's likely, because we're doing a three-year plan, that these six people that you inspire to join EXP, do you think it's plausible that they might have a couple of buddies over those three years, and so that each of those people bring in one person? Mm -hmm. Is that plausible, right? Because, you know, Betty's over a couple of bankers, and Betty's got a buddy, right? When she joins, they're going to want to join, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, we have, so we've got six people there here on level two. So if, if level one is 2,800 per person, per capper, what do you think level two would be, for those of you who don't know? What? What do you think? that right? So no, so level two is, is thirty two hundred. Oh, okay. So oh. so here's so 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 here's what's really amazing. So Laurie Laurie's in the back of the room. 
and and she has someone who's a level one, or a couple of level ones, or a level one, or level two, how, how, how they do it, but you know, in, sitting in front of her, right? And, and they've invited you. So Laurie, in the back of the room, actually gets paid more on what you do if you join than what they do. So the incentivizing of the people that are in that upstream to help somebody who's in their downstream is magnified, right? Because I actually make more if I help you recruit somebody if you're my level one than if I recruit them for myself. And help right? they produce. If, if they produce, right? So, so a producer. So this is, this is a, a system that's built to uh, encourage collaboration, right? And to encourage help. And, and one of the things that, that, I'll, that, that, I'll, that I'll put out there is, um, is, is I know that the people that are in my upline, I have access to them, right? Like, they want me to be successful. They yes. want me to do well. Yes. Right? Because it means they're doing well. Right? So this is, this is, this is that next level that's 32, that's 3,200. So what's 3,200 times 12? 19,2. Times 19 six. Two. So just take care. What is 19,2 plus 16,8? 36. I'll give you a hint. It's 36. So I just, I just want to ask this question and have this kind of like, uh, 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 just to, just to kind of marinate. Is it easier, or do you think it will be easier, to attract six people who attract six people over the six next few years, or to save nine hundred thousand dollars in the next few years? Mm -hmm. This is much easier. And and, and, I'll, and I'll throw this out because you know Juan and, and we and we've talked about this is 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 we talked about their rift this morning and and. Um, this is in a closed group, so it's not public, not like out to the whole world. It's a closed group, and, and almost everybody in this group is in one of the two years downline. So uh, you checked what this month's rev share numbers are going to be, because mm -hmm. it's better than last month. Mm -hmm. And what was it? 13 something? 13 something. 13,000 something, right? And, and how many people do you have that are here at level one that you've heard that you'll want to personally recruit it right now? Um, I think 18. 18. Personal? Right. Right? But that group underneath of them has grown it's up close to 180 people. Right? So so um, obviously they've worked at this, right? They've they've invested in this, they've 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 been attractive, which is very important, right? But, but ultimately nice. but ultimately they've just been consistent, been pleasantly persistent, and, and I'll and I'll 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 tell this before getting to my next last slide, is uh, uh, now it's almost three years ago mm -hmm. when they were in their first couple of months of EXP. I was running training and recruiting at Better Homes and Gardens here locally, and I had known Juan and Bettina for um, you know, six or seven years at the time, back from when they were working at Remax, um, and I was trying to recruit them away from Remax, um, and then we worked together briefly at, uh, at Keller Williams, and then they went over to EXP when I was running uh, Better Homes and Gardens. And they were there with Rob Flick, who had introduced them to, to, uh, to XP. And I sat down and literally let Rob say two sentences and saw one slide. And I got up and I said, this is bullshit. And I walked out. When I saw Rob a few months ago, and, <laughs> and, and he and I were talking because he remembered me. He says, I bet you regret that. <laughs> and I, and I said, yes, I do. My ego was too big for me to understand disruption in the industry, right? That other model is the model that I've worked in my entire life. This, this, this seriously changes the way I have to think about real estate, how I have to think about you know, coaching and training and leading and helping people. It's, it's revolutionary, and I love it. So this is, this is revenue share explained for beginners. For those of you who, whose brains have not overloaded to the point of Boiling, I want to go one step further, um, and I want to talk about thriving, not surviving. Because three thousand dollars a month, I can survive. It'd be hard, but I can survive. Um, these numbers that I'm going to talk about, I'm going to share my favorite quote with Rob Flex. Um, for those who don't know, Rob Flex is the number one recruiter in the history of real estate. It takes serious humility for you to say that. Um, <laughs> because I used to think I was. 
Um, but Rob Flick is the most amazing recruiter in the history of real estate. Um, and, and his revenue share numbers at Keller Williams um, are substantially to the top 20 in revenue share earners at Keller Williams still. And uh, uh, back in February, we were at this conference, and Rob Flick, uh, my, my favorite quote of his from that day is, you know, $250,000 a year from revenue share, from, from profit share, is really good. But $25,000 a day is better. Mm. And split that, so, so here's, here's how I let that sink in. I tried to spend $25,000 a day in my imagination, <laughs> And it got to the point where I was on Sotheby's website going to auctions, right? So, so I'd gone all the way past like what I needed and all that stuff. I bought seven McLarens, um, you know, and because you need a different color every day, yeah. right? And, and you know, and, and I'm like, okay, you know, I could I could use a Matisse, right? Um, so the same thing that we did before with uh, uh, the three thousand dollars a month. I, I want to create a, a new vision. An amplified vision. So this is four and a half million dollars. How many of you have ever saved four and a half million dollars in your life? I have not, right? So no one raised their hand. And we've got some pretty, you know, I never asked that question where there's one person we know in the room because he probably has. But so that same four percent number. But yeah, what did they have to do to get that four point five mil? Yes, exactly. You know, how many generations had to die? For them to have that, right? You, that's that's inheritance, like long-term inheritance money. Most people don't make that and save that in their lives, right? That's old money, right? Um, uh, all right, so that's one eighty and fifteen. So just to just to cast this as a little bit of a, a vision. So four and a half million dollars for me is an impossible number for me to think about saving, right? I'm 50. If I retire at 70, if I live 20 years, and retire at 70. You know, this 20. I, I I don't believe I could save that much in the rest of my. Life. You know what I mean? It's from now until retirement. I just won't think it's possible. So that's 180 thousand dollars a year, which I believe would be a good retirement income. Um, Fifteen thousand dollars a month. Now most of us in the room would say fifteen thousand dollars a month. When 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 Bettina said thirteen thousand is for rev share this month, everybody in the room was like, that's what I want, right? Is not what you want. So this is the vision for, for how to do this. So over the next three years, again, our three-year plan, right? So 10 people, right? So that's three and a half people a year. Tappers. Three and a third tappers a year, right? So that's 10 over the next three years, right? And, I, and, I, and for those of you that are new to this, and brand new to this, how difficult was it for them to invite you to come? It wasn't that difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Right? They, they were basically just friendly to you in a classical way, right? Really this is well. this, yeah, right? So, and, and for, for you, what a great example of how this is not rocket science, right? And one of the things that Rob Flick also likes to say is we're looking for people who are looking for us. This isn't for everyone, right? And, and, and there are people like me who are arrogant and now, I see that as my personal arrogance, but I just wasn't in the right place when this first showed to me, right? So, 10 people. So, I get 10 people to, to 10 cappers to join in the next three years, right? So, 10 cappers at 2800 a month is, there. Is, is, is how much a year? 28000 Wait. Right? 10 cappers. 2800 a month. 2800 a month. It's 2800 a year. That's right. 2800 a year, yes. Yeah. Okay. Times 10. 20,000. Got it. A month. My bad. Yes. A year. A year. A year. A year. So, in the same way how Betty's got a buddy, right? I'm going to work and dedicate a portion of my day and my time to helping these 10 people that I attract to not just be successful thriving real estate agents by introducing them to trainings like this and, and, and people that know what they're doing and helping them. Um, and attracting agents who are already producing, but if those 10, if we can help those 10 get 10, mm -hmm. right, 10 can get 10. So that means there's 100 people at our level two. And that is what? At 3,200. At 3,200. 
320,000. Lewis loves these numbers. I love numbers. I said, I'm going to two problems with math. So what is more? Oh, sorry. What is more? Yeah. Is, is this more than this? Oh, yeah. Right? So, so just homework, reverse engineer. How much money you'd have to save at 4% to to be creating that as uh, as residual income, as passive income? Right? Mm, so, it's, yeah, it's residual. It's residual. So, yeah. so, so here's the thing: this requires awesome. work. I mean, it's not. It's, it, I mean, it's not. It's not. Make like, it part of your business plan. It's part of your business plan, right? It's so, real estate. Yes, exactly. And Please. So, so, so <laughs> one. So, and I'll just throw this out there: is especially in the beginning, one of the things that I am doing as a real estate agent is I am going to training where I'm meeting other real estate agents. Right? I'm interacting with people in the real estate industry. As I start to do business, one of the cool things when I do a transaction is usually I'm talking to three or four agents in the process before I get into contract. Right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's whether I've got a buyer or a seller, right? This gives me an opportunity to have relationships with other agents. Um, and and my ability to be helpful to them and to be kind to them, be pleasantly persistent, invite them to things like this, right, um, is 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 how I have the ability to you know create that ten, right. So um, let's go ahead and stop the 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 the, the video and then we'll we'll answer some.